today we're going to, uh, we may go back uh, next week, I'm sure we will, with, with guest Kevin Powers, uh, as we've been uh, teaching for over a month now on uh, Holy Spirit's, uh, the person, the purpose, and the power of the Holy Spirit. On Sunday mornings and then on Sunday, on Wednesday nights, excuse me, for midweek, we've been doing a study on the nine gifts of the Spirit. And uh, we finished that this past Wednesday. But, uh, but today, I, I, actually, I was planning on doing something else. But as we were singing there, uh, the Lord's been uh, dealing with my heart to go to a scripture. And you know, God spoke to me before, was dealing with me before um, the service today. As we were setting everything up, I had a, a friend of mine, a pastor, uh, Pastor Billy Ritchie from Savannah, Georgia. He called me and uh, he said, Pastor, I've been in prayer for a couple hours. Number one, when he said that, I was like, Lord Jesus, help me. I'm nowhere near where I need to be because I haven't been spending a couple hours in prayer this morning. You know what I'm saying? But uh, that was supposed to be a ju- you know, laugh. And... <laughs> anyway, but, uh, that's my, but I'm being transparent. That was my first thought. So here this man of God is. He's been praying for a couple hours this morning. I've been here hauling, you know, uh, 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 dragging speakers around. And, uh, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, so, but he told me, he said, he said, Pastor, today's going to be a, 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 a powerful day there at Free Point Church. The Lord told me to call you, and I just wanted to obey him. And uh, today is going to be a day where God brings increase to the church, spiritually and physically, all the way around financially. And today's going to be a day of uh, uh, signs, wonders, and miracles. And the Lord told me to tell you that uh, whatever you ask of him, that's what he's going to do today. So we just started praying together. And uh, I stepped out in the parking lot to get away from the vacuum cleaner. And, um, and uh, anyway, we started praying, and uh, we had a good time praying the Lord. But as we were praying, the Lord, what, what was coming out in our prayers is that, uh, that your faith and my faith would not be in the wisdom of man. You know, we know the Apostle Paul said that in his writing. He said, uh, when I come to you, I come to you with much fear and trembling. Um, but I didn't come to you with persuasive words of man's wisdom. But I came to you in demonstration of the spirit and power of God. Why? He says, so that your faith will not be in the wisdom of man. God does not, he does not want, he didn't want their faith, he doesn't want our faith to be in man's wisdom. Amen. But he wants our faith to be in his power. Because his power, when our faith is in his power, then he is free to love us and to provide for us and to take care of us on his level where, th- where there's no shortages of anything. But we can actually tie God's hands and limit God when we don't put our faith in his power and when we doubt his word and we doubt his power and we turn to the wisdom of man and intellect and carnal reasoning for our source of direction and wisdom and life. Amen. Amen. And you saw this so much in 2020. I believe that one of the things of 2020, there was a there was a there was a showcase, there was a division of the wheat and the tares. You know, even people who had, who profess faith, profess believing God can do anything, but then when COVID hit and they had to live what they what they taught. Then it, it, it revealed what was really in the heart. Amen. Amen. We, we, we say we believe healing. We say we believe Psalms 91. We say we believe Luke 10, 19. That God's given us authority. Tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means will harm us. But then we, our words and our life during 2020 for a lot of people said something different. Amen. Why? Because really the faith was in the wisdom of man. What does Dr. Fauci say? What's the news saying? What's the government saying? And then we're going to do that. We'll do whatever they tell us to do. Amen. Instead of coming to the Word. And I'm not saying everybody, I'm, and I'm not trying to be judgmental, but I'm telling you, I saw it. Listen, I, I had, there was a war inside of me. I had to go back to the Word a bunch and say, man, I see so many other people doing this and People in, 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 in the church, in my church, that pastoring, I want me to do 
stuff a certain way. But God, what, what, what's your word say? And help me. Give me boldness to, do, to be obedient to this scripture right here. And just trust you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen, I had a, I had a lady call me up. Because, uh, you know, during that time, we didn't, we didn't uh, we, if people wanted to wear a mask, you know, they could wear a mask. We didn't, uh, we didn't mandate any mask wearing, or we didn't tell people they couldn't wear a mask, you know. Uh, so we let people, I had, we, Elizabeth and I had a lady call us up and cuss us out over the phone. Because we wouldn't mandate mask. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. True story. True story. Hallelujah. And we had we had folks that wouldn't come because we, we we didn't take temperatures at the door. They said, we're going to another church to take temperatures at the door. And what did, you know what I told them? I said, what? Well, I told them, I said, you know, for for three years, I've taught you guys on divine healing. And in the scriptures, people brought their sick to the church. And the apostles laid hands on them. And demons and sickness and diseases were driven out of people. And yet, we're going to stop people at the door and say, if you sit, you can't come to the church? Now, which one's right? I felt the Holy Ghost on that one. <laughs> so I said, we're not taking temperatures at the door. If you want your temperature taken, you can go everywhere else. Every, every store is taking temperatures now. You know, I don't want my temperature taken. I'll take it before I come to church. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. But, that, but it, was a, it was a divide there. And I, and, and I had to really search, really search the scriptures. And there was pressure applied. You know, and when pressure is applied, you, you squeeze an olive. What's on the inside comes out. Oil comes out, all right? When you press, what's on the inside is going to come out. It's going to come out of your, in your, of your mouth. It's going to come out in your actions. We were, we were pressed. And the pressing hasn't stopped. Amen. But, but I'm, I'm saying all that to say God wants our faith in his power. Take a minute and just yield to the Holy Spirit. Worship your Father. you father see what we were talking about earlier and I didn't even know see the Holy Ghost was setting me up I had no idea what I I had, I had a message prepared and then he got in there during worship and God started speaking to me telling me where to go in the scriptures but see that's what Jesus was telling when he said beware of the leaven of the Pharisees that's what he was saying like, beware of the, the teacher, teachings and doctrines of men amen it have you bound up, broke, busted, and disgusted, and Amen. But let 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 the Word of God be the, be your truth and your source of everything, Amen. And then you'll live a life where there's no limits, and the power of God can provide for you and deliver you and protect you, and be everything that God wants to be for you, Amen. Because I'm, Jesus, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get to her. Help me here, Lord. That 
Mark 6.30, okay? Thank you, Jesus. Get that boo there. Hallelujah. Because I'm this this is what the Lord, this is what the Lord's been speaking to my spirit and what I see. Where we are as a nation, where we are as a world, and what's coming. With things of the world, it's just gonna get darker. Right? There's gonna be more, there's, there'll be more plagues. There'll be more shortages of this. There'll be more shortages of that. There'll be more mandates. There'll be more things like the the uh, the, the vaccine pass, where unless you've got this vaccine, where unless you got a pass, you can't enter into this restaurant. You can't enter in that restaurant. You can't work here. Listen, I called a. Um, I feel the Holy Ghost all over this. I called. I called a, uh, there was somebody that was looking for a job, and I did some research for them, a place that was hiring. They, they have signs everywhere that they're hiring. And, and, I, and, I, and I did some re- research. I called somebody and said, hey, I saw that this place is hiring at this rate. Is that right? Because I want to tell them my friend. They're like, yeah, however, um, just want to give you a heads up. If, if they haven't had the COVID vaccine, they're not gonna, they're, they, won't, they won't hire them. And so then I called that person up and I told him. I said, "Hey, listen, it's it's, it's a shot in the dark. Like you, you, I mean, you have to we have to look somewhere else because of because of this. But but that doesn't that's portrayed and displayed and painted as this is a public health concern. But the root is this is control. And I want everybody to know this. So as your pastor, I love you. I'm telling you the truth." It's a control mechanism to control you. And it's just setting things up. If you, if you study any type of end time prophecy, and you know where things, I mean, things are just lining up for one world government, one, one world currency. I mean, it's just, that's where, where it's headed. But as the world is headed that way, what's going to happen is, as people that have shortages of this, shortages of that, shortage of jobs, what's going to happen is the harvest is going to overtake the church. And, and it's not going to be where you're begging somebody to come to church. People are going to want to be in church every day of the week, multiple days of the week, because in the presence of God is where they're going to find their healing, their peace, their sanity, their joy, their guidance. In that corporate anointing. And, but that, this is setting us up for the greatest revival. The end time revival. Because hearts are going to be so open. That in, oh Jesus. Thank you Lord. And that's what happened. Let's, let's read this Mark 6.30. Mark 6.30. Pastor, why'd you why'd you tell us all that about the? Because I'm I'm trying I'm trying to tell you, don't just go and and do things and make decisions without first going to the Word and spending time in prayer and asking God on a personal level, Father, what do you want me to do? Amen. We're to watch and pray. And I'm going I'm going to throw this out there. We're going about to read the text. But Jesus said. Wide is the gate. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many go that way. But, but narrow is the gate and the way which leads to everlasting life and few find it. Well, Pastor, what you say? I'm telling you that if the majority of the world are, are making the same decisions and going the same direction, that's an indicator that that's the wrong direction. You need to go the opposite way. Amen. All right. Mark 6.30. Then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both of what they had done and what they had uh, taught. And he said to them, Come aside by yourself to a deserted place and rest a while. Now I want you to look at this. For there were many coming and going, 
And they did not even have time to eat. I'm telling you right now prophetically, that's the season we're coming into very soon. There's going to be so many people coming and going, desiring ministry, desiring God, needing healing for their body, supernatural healing. And they're going to be coming and going. And you ministers, you anointed by God, you, that been trained, you're not, you're, it's going to find, it's a man, what? You, you're going to get a snack bar here and there. We're going to be carrying snack bars, pull out of our pockets. Amen. You know, when you study John G. Lake's life, this man of God was, was known uh, uh, for having a ministry of healing. And uh, he was actually a, a, he was a doctor. He was a doctor. And uh, God got a hold of his heart. He ended up... Uh, um, Quitting his, his, his practice in, in, in medicine and to answer the call of God, him and his wife moved and his children moved to Africa, started ministry over there. But uh, when you study uh, his life, there was people constantly coming and going, coming to his house and going. To, it, it, just, it just wore the whole family out because of the, the, the uh, people were so hungry and the needs were so great. But then the, the supply of God's Spirit anointing on his life was so great. that No matter what the need was, what the disease was, people were being healed, even raised, back, back to, uh, raised from the dead. And that's what was happening in Jesus' day, and that's, where, that's the hour that we're coming into as the body of Christ, is they didn't even have time to eat. Amen. Can you imagine going to... Uh, uh, going to search heroes and you can't even get in the door people meet you outside say hey brother I've been hearing about uh, you walk with God and God's been using you to heal the sick and I've been diagnosed with this will you pray for me and then another person comes to you and say hey I heard you have a relationship with God and listen I never even thought about God but I, I recently because of circumstances and trials stuff going on in my life I need God in my life can you help me and then you minister to that person. And before you know it, you've been there two hours. And it's like, man, I, I need to have time to eat. Store's closing. Amen. That's where we're coming. Somebody said, that's, where we, that's the hour we're coming into. So they departed to a deserted place in the boats by themselves. But the multitude saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran there on foot from all the cities. They arrived before them and came together to him. Now, I want you to, now listen. These guys just got back from a ministry trip. Jesus sent them out two by two and gave them authority to heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead. They came back. And now Jesus said, hey, I want to give you all some rest. Okay, I want you all to get in the boat. I want you all to go to the other side over here. Get away from all the crowds of people with all these big needs. Y'all need, need some rest. They get in a boat. And the, and the people heard that Jesus was going to be over there. So check this out. Before they got to the, when they got to the other side, people from all over were waiting on them. The hunger was so great. Come on. The needs were so great. People wanted God, a touch from God so much that they traveled on foot to get to where these guys were going. And they actually wound up in a, in a deserted place, and by foot, it was a three-day journey. Now, I want you to think about the hunger to receive a word from Jesus, to receive a touch from Jesus, a hunger for salvation. Amen. That's happening. That's happening. But the multitude saw them depart, Many knew him and ran there on foot from all the cities. They arrived before them and came together to him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep not having a shepherd. He began to teach them many things. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and already the hour is late. Send them away 
that they may go into the surrounding country and villages to buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. All right. So I'll stop there. Remember, we earlier we were talking about spiritual first. Before Jesus was worried about anybody eating food, those thousands of people were not worried about food. They hadn't even thought about food. They were wanting a word from God. Jesus didn't, I'm, and I'm not saying I'm against, uh, I, I, programs are good. But Jesus didn't offer them a show. He didn't offer them a program. He sat down there and gave them the living word of God. Amen. Spiritual first. Praise the Lord. But isn't it interesting? They didn't have to buy inflatables. They didn't have to spend a hundred bucks and boost a Facebook post. You're invited to church this Sunday. Think about all the things we, we do to try to get people to church. To try to get people to Jesus. To convince them, hey, look. What we're offering is better than what, than, than, what you're, than what you have. Jesus is all you need. Like there's miracles, there's signs, there's wonders. Send them away that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. All right? But he answered and said to them, You give them something to eat. They said to him, Shall we go and buy 200 dinar worth of bread and give them something to eat? But he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, five and two fish. Then he commanded them to make them all sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in ranks in hundreds and in fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed, and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples who sat before the people. And the two fish he divided among them all, so that they all ate and were filled, and they took up twelve baskets full of fragments and of the fish. Now, those who had eaten the loaves were about 5,000 men. All right? So, you! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Hallelujah! Having fun in there. Thank you, Jesus. We want. We want church to be fun to our children. That way, that way they don't have the testimony growing up that, that they grew up on drugs. You know, that parents drug them to church. No. <laughs> parents don't have to drag them to church. They want them to come. It blessed me when Lily Aaron says, we going to church tomorrow. Aww. You know, it's Monday, you know. <laughs> baby, we got to wait, baby. <laughs> we can have church in the house. She said, I want to go to the red church. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but again, the disciples were concerned about, for the people because they've, they're out in this wilderness, three days journey. They need something to eat. And he, they asked Jesus about it. He says, what does he say? He says, you give them something to eat. Now listen, there's thousands of people. You give them something to eat. All right. You do it. You do it. You do it. I wonder how often do we come to God and we're, we ask God to do something. And he's like, you do it. I've given you the authority. I've given you the power. I've given you my word. I've given you my name. I've given you my spirit. How many times we, we go to God and pray asking God to heal somebody? He said, I told you to lay hands on the sick and then recover. He said, you give them something to eat. Praise God. God's already did all he's going to do. He said, I, he said he's blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly place. Amen. We have all things pertaining to life and godliness. It's when we act in faith in God's word. It doesn't move God. God's already moved. It's just God's already moved. He's put spiritual laws in, in work, and it works for anybody that will work them. It's just when we move in faith, we, we, we activate what God's already provided. Amen. Amen. So these guys need a miracle. They needed to feed thousands of people. And then uh, he says, you feed them. And they said, how shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? Oh, shall we go and buy uh, 200 denarii worth of bread and 
give them something to eat. And he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. So God always starts with what you have. Amen. God always starts with what you have. And, and what you have is never enough for what God asks you for. Because what God asks you for, what he wants you to do, what he wants to do with you, is always going to uh, require his grace. It's always going to require his power. Amen. His wisdom. So what you have is never going to be enough. And God doesn't need it to be enough. He just needs you to take what you have and surrender it to him. Come on, somebody. Shout loud if you believe it. <laughs> hey, he just needs you to take what you have and surrender it to him. And then when you take what you have and surrender to him, then he puts his blessing on it. And his blessing makes a difference. But notice Jesus blessed the, the, the bread and the fish. He gives it back to them. Gives them instructions on how the people are to see it. God, God has a God of order. If you want his results, you have to do things his way. He has his way of doing things. I'm learning that more and more. You do it his way, you get his results. He told them to sit down in ranks. Groups of 50. And then he took the bread, gave it to them, and had the disciples go and hand the bread. And I want you to know, listen, the miracle didn't happen before they went. Oh, this is a word for somebody. Jackson, you ready? Give me a high five. You ready? I said high five. Because we high up in here. High with Jesus. All right. So, so the miracle didn't happen as they sat. Many people, Bo, God tells them to do something, and they sit, and they pray, and God tells them to do something, and they sit, and they sit, and then years pass by, and everything's sitting. Everybody's sitting. God's sitting on his throne. they sitting. Everything's sitting. <laughs> Nothing's happening. And they wonder why it ain't happening. And they, and they sit because they're waiting on God to, to bring them the provision they need to do what he tells them to do. But God doesn't work that way. It's how God works. God gives you, God blesses your bread, and then he tells you to go and feed the people with it. And then as you go and break the bread, the bread will multiply. Amen. Come on. As you, as you apply for that business license, the finances will come. As you start on that website, the provision will come. As you have meetings, the provision will come. Hallelujah. That's how he works. But now you've got to have a word now. You've got to have an instruction. It's got to be a word from God. But the miracle happens. As, somebody say it happens as you go. Those ten lepers came to Jesus. They said, Master. Hey, at a distance. Jesus said, go show yourself to the priests. Is that all? Like, there's nothing else? But we still have leprosy. If we, if we go to the priest, the priest going to see that we still have leprosy and we're still going to be labeled as a leper. Like, this doesn't make sense. However, at your word, we'll do it. Doesn't make sense, but you told us to do it. The Bible says, as they went, they were cleansed. Come on. Somebody say, as they went. As they went. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But the disciples went out. They, they broke the loaves and, and the two fish. Or, or excuse me. And there was so much that everybody was filled. Everybody left full. Now, five loaves and two fish, there was 5,000 men, not including the women and children. And five loaves two and two fish, everybody was full. And they had leftovers. Now, now, listen to me. When we do things God's way, our life becomes full. To overflow. Amen. 
Have leftovers. Have more than enough, have, have, have more than enough, have, have, have supply for other people. Not just, not just trying to make it till we get to heaven. Praise God. But when you, we live by faith and we put faith in the power of God and not in the wisdom of man. And we simply listen and obey. As we go, things multiply and there's more than enough for everything to be full in our life. And for us to have provision for those around us. That's God's way. And that's the result of putting faith in the power of God. Yeah, boom, by day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is king. Jesus is king. Jesus is king. I just want to just want to share. This building project. We didn't have the money for a building when we started. Amen. We didn't have the people to work before we started. But God said, build a church. We went, we went looking for land. Didn't, didn't have a dollar to buy nothing. We drove all over Coffee County. Had other people. Roger was driving around. I remember just when we were still living in Savannah, I'd come and one one evening, I jumped in the truck with Mike and Beth Rogers. We riding around. Looking. What about this? This might be for sale. That might be for sale. That might be for sale. That might be for sale. What you what you think about this? What you think about that? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to think. God, what do you think? And then, where we're at, with the property that we have, let me tell you about it. This is how God works. God put it on Roger's heart to contact the person who owned the 30 acres that, that the church purchased. It wasn't on the market. But Roger had talked to him before about possibly buying it years ago. So he called the man. He said, would you be interested in, in, in selling this to a church? What did he say, Roger? So we'll talk about it. He said it wasn't for sale, but we'll sell it to a church. Y'all put a church on there, we'll sell it to a church. That's favor of God. But but when we started, we didn't know we didn't know where the land was gonna be. We didn't know who owned the land, and we didn't have money to pay for the land. Personally. The ministry didn't. So we bought the land. Actually, somebody in the church bought the land. Come on. Now listen, they operated in faith. Yes. Now think about it. They took out a loan to buy 30 acres of land that they didn't need for the church, trusting that God was going to provide money to the church to be able to pay for it. Now don't you think about how people operating in faith. And God, but, but God told him to do it. All right? When I think about that sometimes, I'm like, wow, God, you're so amazing. Only you can do this. Well, I tell you, God wants you to put, have your faith in his power. Don't limit him on what he wants to do for you in your life. He's got big things for you. Don't look at what's going on in the world and I, I can't do this because this. Amen. So, and then we started to work and the land was, they purchased that land in I think February. We immediately started to work. And then we, we cast vision for it. You all started giving towards it. And then we had, we started hiring people to go and do work on the land. But, but, but God provided as we went. Come on. Amen. And then what happened in July, on July 25th, God provided the church with $617,000. <laughs> on July 25th.
Amen. And we'll be sharing more details, but you, you know what we've done? We took a little over $60,000 and we sowed it into other ministries. Because we take 10% of every increase and we, we, and we sow it. Amen. You don't think that's a step of faith? We can use that for a parking lot. <laughs> we can use that for so many other things, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we took that, we, we purchased the land, and then we, we started uh, building the, the church. But things were already in progress by faith. Amen. And God is providing. He continues to provide. And he's going to continue to provide. Because our faith is not in the wisdom of man, but in the what? The power of God. And, and things multiply as you go. Somebody say, as I go. Amen. If y'all will stand to your feet.